pro here. Yeah, um, been working with Amiga for a little while now and um, stumbled on the fact that I'd like to be able to um, uh, create disks and um, save disks to files, and that means I'm um, using images to create disks and taking disks and creating images. And then um, I worked with some of this legacy PC equipment, and um, even to the extent of Windows XP, going back to free DOS, different types of image tools. Uh, and I was also trying to do the same trick for other disks, not only Amiga disks, and I really found out it was to, ah, nothing was really working So um, as a pure software solution. So I actually found something that is um, hardware and software based. And um, let's see how that will work. But let's have a look at it first. Anyway, the product I came upon was this Amiga kit branded product called um, Greased Weasel, and um, it's a hardware board USB based interface to a standard floppy disk drive, and it has software that comes with it that works through the USB drive and controls the <coughs> floppy disk drive, and it can handle quite a few different. Um, image formats and even such formats that are unknown like you would try and do magnetic level um, copying of disks so let's have a look at what the hardware actually looks like so anyway this is how it was delivered so we actually have a little board here and then it has a USB connector and then it has a um, cable to go out to one um, floppy disk drive and then it has a power cable also to go out to one floppy disk drive and then it has some <coughs> connect or configurable um, headers here and that was for uh, if you want to um, burn a new for firmware or a new firmware or you want to make the board read only so that it actually doesn't accidentally write to the disk. Now there are f uh, cables for more than one drive. I think in the documentation you can have theoretic you could have up to five drives with of course the appropriate cable. Uh, but then of course you have to have a separate power delivery so <laughs> the USB will not be able to able to uh, power that. Um, there was a comment in the documentation that it, it, it can't really support all scenarios of multi-drive use, it, uh, so it depends a bit on the bandwidth of the USB you, you have. Um, it can support three and a half, three inch, five and a quarter inch drives, so that's what the standard never really heard what of three inch drives but let's say if you're dealing with a retro uh, Amiga and or PC then it's three and a half and uh, five and a quarter inch which is the um, and as you see the thing that is missing in the package is that it, you um, or at least in this this package that I purchased um, you don't get the required USB cable, so the so A to B type USB cable, and then you need a PC compatible um, floppy disk drive. Just a, yeah, pretty much any standard drive should do. And this drive is from about the same uh, generation as um, the Amiga is, so it's like 90s, 90s tech. So. But I mean, uh, yeah. getting less and less <laughs> available, not installed in modern PCs. But anyway, I have one of those, I have one of those, so that's what we can start with. So, um, let's have a little look at the software side of things. So I'll actually put these uh, 
<coughs> links in the comments so you can just um, get them from there. But anyway, it's um, uh, the whole solution is open source. So the, the, these boards you can actually find branded as other other boards and uh, the Namiga kit. So it's not only yeah, you know, yeah. So uh, depending on uh, when you s search for the uh, product, then um, you you might find it in branded or, or non-branded. And um, it has uh, this. Um, GitHub page, which is the main landing point for um, for the um, software side of things. So here you have the Grease Weasel um, host tools. And here you have a link to actually download it, and you have a 64-bit Windows, 32-bit uh, Mac, Linux. So it's actually quite uh, quite good support for various platforms. So when it comes to documentation, you have this GitHub wiki, and it's, there's things like getting started and uh, what's that too interesting? Image types. There we are. Just we're you know we're we're interested in ADF for this video, but as you see, I just wanted to show that it actually does support. <laughs> and then you get uh, some write-only options, and then uh, more like raw raw flux access to the disk drives. So it can actually handle very many different things. But anyway, we, we're we're going to run the test on that one. And this is uh, when you download it. Um, there's no installation program; it's just a command line utility. So I'll be demonstrating the use, um, or I'll connect this up and then um, demonstrate how how to use it you know, for this specific use case. I think this probably somewhere there's somebody built um, a graphical user interface or an interface where the um, uh, this Grease Weasel software is embedded in it. So. But I, I'm going to use the raw vanilla um, grease weasel software. So let's get it connected up. So there you see that the drive is keyed and the cable is keyed. Oh. Tricky to demonstrate. And it should go like that. And it can only go one way. It's the same with the power. And it's also keyed. So you can't get it on wrong. It's not like that. And they've been nice enough to put a insulating pad underneath here. So, so if this flies around and hits something metallic, you don't short it out. Kind of a nice thought. Just the USB cable, and then that plugs in there. So, and I will just plug the other end into the computer. So, I'll just show it does have a few stat, or at least one stat is <laughs> hot. I don't know if I can show it in the camera. That's what it looks like when it's run. So anyway, let's see. Um, and with this test, I'm going to first try and read. Uh, this is an original. This is a backup copy of a workbench, Amiga Workbench 1.3. So I'm going to actually first try and read this. This out. So I'm going to just put it in the disk drive. Maybe nothing happens. So I just extracted all the program's files. Uh, it's just a zip file that I got, so it just contains. And then this is the main executable, gw.exe. So let's um, clear the screen so I don't have any other junk. And I'm already in the correct directory. Let's see. Then there's a help um, option. 
So it actually shows all the options for the software. And um, we're going to first use the info command and see if it actually finds anything. Okay. To perform new firmware version 1.4. Okay. I will be leave that for now. But it seems to have found it, it, it uh, recognizes it, gives the information about it and recognizes what the version was. So I, I would say that it should theoretically be working. And, um, so now I'm going to try and issue a read command. Very first time using this, so we'll see if it works. Or it might need options. <laughs> ah. Okay. Well, that um, looks promising. Let's see if the drive makes any, any odd noises. Ah, no, not really. Ah, you can see that there's a green light flickering on the device at least. But that could be normal. Well, one has to take into account that it does raw read, so it, it might be um, it might be okay for those to be missing. So, so one shouldn't really take a be in a panic. So uh, it's going to go to 80 tracks or something. So I'll be back when it's done. Or shows a permanent error. <laughs> so that ended in an error. But this, this boot disk I've been using a lot. So that um, shouldn't be a problem with the content on it. And this disk drive is a working disk drive. It's, an, it's a non-working unit. So. Hmm. Hi. Tech rabbit from the future. Ah, uh, this is uh, <laughs> very close to taking that card and dumping it in the garbage. But I actually succeeded in in my specific configuration to get it to work. So I thought I'd give it a fair uh, story. So um, I'm just going to show it, show you that it actually does work, uh, and then I'm going to discuss what I actually had to do to get it to work. So um, yeah start. So back to the beginning. So um, that was nice. Get a list of commands. And then um, we can take if we find out if we have a device. And we do. The things that I did was to actually update the firmware, and I must say that was very nice. I can show you the command. I won't run it again because I've already done it. But um, you just execute that, and in the case of my card, it just went and got the um, firmware, the latest firmware, and installed it. Um, as you hear, I might have you might hear the air conditioning in the background. So it is bit hot work trying to get this to work, so I'm going to uh, <laughs> cool down the brain of it. Now, so this is done, and then I'm going to show one thing that is actually very important. So this here. Now, in this case, this is giving the right band is read band. And then it's on um, estimated consistent bandwidth. And you get no warning here now. And this was due to the fact that I actually hunted through my computer 
for a USB port, of which I have many, both USB 2 and USB 3, and an extension card with USB 3 ports. And it wasn't like if you plugged it into a USB 3 port that it immediately worked, that you didn't get a warning. Because I was getting a warning down here, um, estimated consistent minimum bandwidth, it was saying warning. Um, but actually, when I plugged it into one specific outlet on the, which, nah, probably not that surprising, it was a, a USB 3 connector directly connected to the motherboard, so, um, yeah. But I had to go through the different ports, uh, testing um, what the um, uh, port would be um, good enough. So that was one of the one of the things. So, so continuously running GWEED bandwidth and making sure you don't get a warning here. You you get this text here. So it's not telling you that it, it doesn't have a, doesn't seem to have enough USB bandwidth to get the work. And now we're going to take um, the workbench disk, the one that I've been prototyping with. And I'm going to put it in the drive. It, like I was trying to do before. So, let's see how it does. You might notice that it's slightly faster than before. And then it, you know, the, the clicking on the draw actually, when you probably can't hear it in the microphone. Clicking on the drive sounds more like uh, you know, it, 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 it sounds more even. Does that make any sense? And I want to do this real time and show the whole, the whole thing so you can actually see that it actually is capable of reading an Amiga workbench disk. And you see 1760 sectors of 1760. 100% sex rate, and I am able to reproduce this, so um, you know, multiple times. So it's it's not a fluke that this comes up. So that being done, so now we have a valid image file, and um, I need to take a blank blank disk. Write that file or the image. I'm going to write the image. So, let's see. Again, I'm going to let it run its whole course so you can actually see that it's working. Maybe you get also in the film, you get kind of a feeling of what the speed's like and you know, what the numbers are. If you need to debug this situation, uh, the grease. Weasel, if you need to debug it yourself, then you, you, have, you have a video to, uh, so you could actually take a workbench disk like I've done, and then you could actually like, go through this exercise and, uh, and see if your um, unit performs the same way. So again, the drive sounds very happy. It's going click, click, click. You know, the the execution time seems to be the same. It's not retrying anything. As you see, there's no errors being reported. And we definitely were not getting this type of <laughs> behavior when I first started. <coughs> I had to start the air conditioning. Yeah. Ugh. So, and actually, there's one thing that it doesn't really show in this output is that it's um, when it writes the track, it actually does an initial verification of the track. So it says all tracks verified. I mean, it it does it 
the, the first pass verification it, do, it does and it doesn't print it on the screen um, if it needs to if it needs to verify the track like we saw before if it needs to verify it it had read fails and retries and retries then you'll get that report on it but, but it, not in the not if it runs normally where where the first verification succeeds then it doesn't show up in this list so okay then we have a workbench um, theoretically 1.3 we're going to put it on the side so I'm actually going to run a test on this on, the, on an Amiga I need to remember that this <laughs> that is the so I'm going to put it on put it with the um, original disc so I know that <laughs> oh, I know what it is and um, now we're going to take Switch to a bigger screen here. So. Um, not that it matters, but I've been using these legacy retro discs. There are many different brands out there, so I don't know if it really matters. And these are. Um, oh, sorry, these are. I don't Oh, I said wrong. I'm not using these. It was exactly that. Oh, I like so. Oh, I messed up. Oh, okay. So these here are high, so-called high def, uh, high density disks, and um, they are, in the case of the disks that I have. Black. Okay, and um, it has uh, the right protection tab, and then on the other side here, it has a hole that's the that, that will tell the driver it's a high density, high density uh, disk. So if you wanted to use it for Amiga images and stuff, then you need to cover that and, and trick it to think that this is a double density disk. I was actually going to say that, that's why I had these discs. But I'm not using these discs. Because I'm actually uh, these discs that I'm ah, proper double density discs. So these are originally double density. So you, the the discs that one usually used with um, with the Omega just kind of like that. So anyway, how are these discs? Take it and insert and draw it, and then we're going to try and write out um, the image that I, the ADF image I downloaded from the net, which is is a workbench. Uh, Two point one. Disk is in, and then we're just going to try and write that and see what happens. So I'm, I'm creating two um, workbench disks, and I have two Amigas. I have a, uh, yeah, and I'll show you 500 Classic, and then I have a 500 Plus. And the um, 500 Classic uses the 1.3 workbench, and then the, um, the other one I'm actually working to restore. So it's in its testing phase, so I need the Workbench 2.1 um, to use on that one.
again, I'm running the whole thing in real time so that you can actually see. So this is the second disk being written from an ADF um, image file. So it'll give you a feeling of uh, when when the weasel is working. The, what is it? What is it like? Because that's also important for debugging, I guess. All the issues I've been fighting uh, have been instability, uh, you know, non-reproducibility. -rep See, all tracks verified, so that's perfect. Okay, so now I promise to give a little bit of an in uh, overview of what I actually did to get it to be that good. And then for that, I will uh, switch over to the. I'm going to write down this um, um, disk model in the comments also, so you don't have to look at the film. So, so um, uh, theoretically speaking, this is a. Oh, this this is a. Oh. <laughs> When you look at the life cycle of the usage of three and a half inch disk drives, this is probably uh, in the middle domain of um, the three and a half inch disk drive development. So this is not the not the latest, but it's not the oldest uh, that you can find. And um, it actually says how much it um, needs on, on the five volt um, rail. See what it did. What did it say? Nine hundred and sixty milliamps. Nine hundred and sixty milliamps. Not one. Not a hope in hell. Yeah. Not a hope. No hope to um, deliver that over standard USB. So um, what I did first was that I used the powered USB hub. That's right. USB 3.0 powered USB hub. And then I got the read action to be much more stable. But the write was hopeless. The, the, uh, really, it, it, it didn't work worth it. Garbage. Um, then I introduced my desktop power supply. And I fed the 5 volts into here. Um, from the desktop power supply. And I got much better uh, read action results. And also it tried to write a bit better, but it was also pretty sort of random and hopeless. But then what I did is that um, I connected in the 12 volts line. Because the, if you look at the, the power cable for a floppy disk drive, you have both plus 5 and 12 volts. Um, could be that it's not connected in this drive. But when I connected it, bingo! Reading worked fine. I could read and I could read and I could read. And writing works. <laughs> so uh, it seems like the comment about you may need an external power supply is, yeah, I, I, I'd say you, you need an external power supply uh, and a powered USB hub. So, so now I power the board directly from a powered USB hub, and I use an external power supply um, to provide plus 5 volts and plus 12 volts. Uh, and um, at least when using this specific drive, it works very well. Uh, and then a bit of comments about these cables. There's lots and lots of text about that you should use a direct cable, that it would work better. Or masses of all kinds of very strange stuff so don't believe that don't go down that rabbit hole it, it doesn't have any meaning please if you have a standard PC you probably describe this cable is perfectly okay you could debate about the length but it could be shorter but then of course in PCs you also have you can have this length in an Amiga uh, 2000 or something then you have this length but, uh, but, but you know that's the the cables not the issue but I must say the power stability seemed to be a very big factor in, in, in getting this to work. So, anyway, that was my 
my input to the thing. I, I don't know. My experience, let's say. Maybe others have other experience, but um, I must say that as soon as I stabilized um, uh, powered USB feed, power USB hub, and then dedicated plus 5 to 12 volt supply, I, I don't really get it to fail. However, I do want to point out that when I was testing, it succeeded in um, ruining this disk. This was a bra brand new disk. And I think because I, it was riding at lower voltages, and, and, uh, because the voltage levels weren't working well for the board and or, and or for the drive, I think the magnetic structure on this disk <laughs> got completely messed up. Uh, I tried to raise to clean up the disk, but it, 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 you can't write to this disk. It, it, it just, um, yeah, it, it doesn't work anymore. So I, I actually, one of my frustrations was that I, I, um, I, I need, yeah, I had to notice that and swap this out for a, a new one. I, d I really seriously doubt that this was broken from the very beginning because I think I've used this for something. But, um, yeah, whatever. Yeah. That was also have a stack of disks, uh, swap out the disk if it, as a test just to see that if it's, um, if it's the issue. And as I said, you can use high density disks as long as you block off the um, high density sensor window. However, if you have an older. Um, floppy disk drive that might not be high density capacity, ah, that, then you, ah, okay, you have to go back very far into, uh, relatively far into the beginnings of the PC development with three and a half inch disk, then, then you actually, it doesn't even have that sensor for that high, high density uh, window, but then they're really old drives. Okay, so that's that, so now the, um, next step I think is to, um, show a demonstration of those workbench disks that I've created that they actually work or don't. So let's try that. So now I've swapped out to this one and then the, this screen causes the camera to go a bit darker so let's see. This should start. At least it did last time. Yeah, so it's 1.2 and then we can use a 1.3 workbench disk and that's we have the pair we can actually have a test that one let's put this in and see what it does now the okay so the 500 plus has a has a um, problem with the um, disk drive my problem but that was good because I'm still, I'm <laughs> that was what I, that was the next step of testing this one was to test if the disk drive works. See that it completely loads. And then you can see the interlace. But I didn't see before. So this is an interlaced mode now. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. First time I've seen it switch automatically to interlaced mode. No, because I changed it in the preferences and then I booted it. Then I haven't booted it after that. Now when it's rebooted, then it's... Um, oh, no. Another issue with... Or it's not an issue, it's a feature of... So you get more... Um, desktop real estate. <laughs> I think I'm gonna swap that. For this specific monitor I think I'm gonna swap it back. That's the interlaced mode. But anyway that's um, proven that the Workbench 1.3 works. And, and there's an issue with that drive. It um, does not work. Which is interesting. So I'm going to do some offline research. I actually do have one extra Amiga drive, uh, Amiga, uh, that came, that is, came, has come from a Amiga. So 
so I can actually... I don't want to take this apart because this is now finished and complete. So I don't want to sabotage my... my um, 500 Classic because it's all restored. But said I'm going to switch back in the preferences someday. When I'm using it, I'll switch back to the non-interlaced non version of the display. I think that'll be much better. Or it was a nicer, nicer retro picture, put it that way. Okay, so I'm gonna do some offline testing, see if the other Amiga Drive works for that one. And if it doesn't, then I'll see if I can go to a marketplace or something and pick up another drive. So, anyway, um, yeah, the Amiga 500 Plus is, as I said, it's under restoration, so it's, um, I did have been doing some diagnostics on that disc, and the, the actual disc that, that came with the computer is, is not completely dead, it's just that it doesn't read a disc at all. Um, the other disc that I had, uh, that it came originally from an Amiga 2000, it's, it's, it's ju it was just a throw-in item for one of the purchases I made, and um, it turns out that it um, the upper head um, reads very badly. And so it's uh, I, I don't want to use that. In the I, I tried it a couple of times, but it's, it it errors out on the um, to on the top um, reading the top um, sectors, and and that's wrong because that that has nothing to do with um, with, with grease weasel. Um, uh, creating the it's it's the, it's the problem of the actual disk drive, so I decided I'm going to skip it. Um, but if you'd like to follow the progress with the 500 plus, it's um, as I said, it's under testing, and um, I've actually ordered um, replacement floppy disk drive for it. So um, I intend to put it into operational condition, and yeah. And anyway, that was Grease Weasel. I think it actually works okay as long as one looks after the power, power stability of the power supply. And um, and I will be using those boot disks that I created um, for the uh, 500 plus when I get it up and running. So uh, yeah, consider hitting the bell, bell bell icon and consider subscribing if you won't miss that video. And I hope this was informative. A uh, real life um, example of setting up Grease Weasel and getting it to work. So, um, yeah. See you in the next one.